Good morning, Hick. It's Tuesday. So I love visual art. I think it is good and helpful to have stuff on your walls that connects you to beauty and wonder and awe. But one thing about art is that it's often very expensive. And another thing about art is that the art world can be kind of, uh, gross. You know, headlines like, Paul Allen's art collection to be auctioned for a billion dollars does not make it feel like art is for normal people, but I promise it is. So first off, art does not have to be expensive. Like, one of my favorite artworks in our home is this print by Nathaniel Russell demanding snake poems now. I love it because it's beautiful but also because posters tend to make political statements or encourage consumption habits, and this poster just wants snake poetry. And I like to imagine rallies for snake poetry where people are like, what do we want? Snake poems! When do we want them? But anyway, Russell's prints are available on his website for $40, and there are similarly talented artists all over the world who have work available. Many even do commissions via Instagram or Twitter. And if you want to get really inexpensive art, you can go to, like, thrift stores and garage sales and often find unique works there. And you can make a good thrift store painting great by adding some Star Wars, like Dave from DaveRuinsArt.com does. By the way, his prints are $20. Also, you might think art auctions are only for rich people, but there are art auctions on eBay all the time, and also on Artsy.net, where, for example, Right now, there is one fundraiser auction with an artwork by Michelle Grabner, one of my favorite artists, that's available for $300, which is a lot of money, but if you look at it every day for 50 years, it's only two cents a day. Now, I know what you're thinking, John, you just turned 45. You're not going to look at anything every day for the next 50 years. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that energy into the video. Back to art. For me, Artsy is like Zillow for art. It's a great place to just like scroll through and get a sense of what you like and what things costs and what galleries or artists you might want to follow. Now, there are two big auction houses, Sotheby's and Christie's, that make almost all of their money selling, like, Rolexes and Warhols to the world's richest people, but anybody can visit their websites. And I like to visit them, partly so that I can think, wow, somebody's gonna spend a hundred million dollars on this painting by Claude Monet and then store it in a windowless storage facility. Wealth is a hell of a drug. But also, not everything is Monet expensive. Like, one of my favorite Impressionist painters is Eugène Baudin, who was one of Monet's teachers, and whose works on paper sometimes sell for, like, a couple thousand dollars, which is a ton of money, obviously, but it's one fifty thousandth of what a Monet costs. Plus, it's just fun to look at the art, and if you zoom in and make the images full resolution and click around a bunch, that costs Sotheby's and Christie's some hosting money, which they pass on to their gajillionaire customers, so it's like a very indirect tax on the rich. Okay, and then of course there are art galleries and local art centers and art schools where works are often for sale. Also, there are art fairs where you can see a curated selection of lots of different artists, like this weekend in Indianapolis is Butter, an annual art fair featuring black artists from Indianapolis and around the world. There are also DJs and artists workshops and lots of other stuff. It is overwhelmingly the coolest thing that happens in Indianapolis, and I'm not just saying that because Sarah is part of the curatorial team. So if you live in Indianapolis, there's Butter, but wherever you live, there is so much cool art. For me, the art that means the most to me is the stuff that I connect to personally. Maybe that's because I see a painting that looks the way OCD feels to me, or maybe it's because it's art made made by someone I love. Like, my favorite work of art in our home is this painting that my mom made of the lazy boy where I wrote Looking for Alaska. It just brings me such joy and solace, and I hope that you have or find art for your walls that does the same for you. Hank, I'll see you on Friday.